The episode begins with the program that Ma Dong had hacked, and the news broadcasters allow it to run without interruption. Ma Dong uses this to reveal to the whole world that the Lee Siok that they all knew was actually a pretender, and the twin brother of the real Lee Siok. His name was Lee Huang and he was also responsible for the murder of Lee Siok's wife. Ma Dong also shows the CCTV footage of the day when Professor H Wang was distracted and he and Mai Ran were removed from the cryogenics vessel without his approval. Finally, the show ends with the real Lee Siok revealing himself and the atrocities that were put on him by his own twin brother. Everyone including the fake Lee Siok is shaken by this reveal. He had made so much effort to suppress the story, and yet the cat was now out of the bag. Mai Ran, on the other hand, is proud of what he partner had done but she is a little pissed that he didn't involve her in all of this. She confronts Ma Don later, and the man tells her that he didn't tell her because she wouldn't let him do it, considering how risky it was. The next day, Ma Don's place is crowded with reporters from all other news outlets to take his interview, now that he had revealed the greatest scandal in the world. However, Ma Don did break a few laws by hijacking a news telecast, and he is summoned to the board meeting. The people are not happy with what he had done and the steps he had taken to do it, although it was a good thing. However, Ma Don doesn't care, he knows he did the right thing and accepts the words of his superiors with a smile on his face. After the meeting with the press board, Ma Don goes to his office and announces that he will take accountability for what he had done and declares that as a 52-year-old it was finally time for him to quit his work. Elsewhere, the fake Lee Siok decides to keep on with his charade. After all, they had no idea where the real one was so he could just pass it all as fake news. He goes to the board meeting of his company and tells them all that the news was a fake one to defame him. However, soon the real Lee Siok arrives in a wheelchair along with his son. The whole room is divided, not knowing who to trust with each of the Lees calling the other one their fake. Just then an old lawyer of the company gets up and tells them that there is one thing that their father told him that only the real Lee Siok should know and that is how they can prove their identity. The Lee in the wheelchair does so with no difficulty, and finally, the fake one is taken into custody. Later the real Lee goes to visit his twin brother in jail, and Lee H. Wang reveals why he did what he did. He tells him how he was jealous that their father always cared for Lee, and how he was always the one in the shadow. He acknowledges that he was never good and so he planned to become Lee. Lee Hewing had hoped that Lee would just die in the accident since only his son or he could give the man the blood during his accident. Since the child was too small to donate blood, if he didn't show up he would have won. However, he was put into the cryogenics and survived which pissed Hewing off. His plan was close to fruition and now everything was lost. After quitting his job, Ma Dong has nothing to do but stay idle at home. After all, on paper, he was still 52 years old and no one would probably hire him. His family however tells him that he can still be a good person and live his dream as a journalist if he wants to. Then they break the news that there is a plumbing issue in the house and he needs to go to sleep elsewhere for a week if that is okay with him. Despite his looks, he is the eldest brother so he agrees and decides to head out. Suddenly he gets a call from some news company. The company wants to offer him a huge contract with a lot of money. It all sounds really good but Ma Dong tells them that he wouldn't want to be tied down to such a contract. He wanted to be a free journalist. The people even offer him creative freedom and tell him to contact them if he changes his mind. Ma Don then meets up with Mai Ran who tells him that the upper floor of her house was empty and he could come to live with them if he wanted to. Ma Don is elated, he can't wait to share the same house with his girlfriend and do stuff with her. However, when he reaches there he realizes that the place is a shared room and Professor H Wang has been staying there as well. It gets all his excitement down but he still manages to find some private time with Mai Ran. The two even share a kiss. The next day, Ma Don decides to drop Mai Ran to the office and goes to meet his friend who helped him with the whole video that he made. The guy then finally comes clean about Chai Na and tells Ma that she looked for him for ages after he was lost. She even came to him to ask for help since no one else was helping her. However, back then none of his friends helped her. Ma Dong feels bad about it and finally realizes how Na must have felt. He calls her and tells her to meet him on the roof of the office. When the two meet, Ma explains that he had gone because of his situation since he had no money and he needed to help his mother back then. He had always thought that she didn't care and that is why he was so angry and sad with her. He didn't even care that the world had forgotten about him but the fact that she did was what hurt him the most. Na also acknowledges that she did let go of him eventually, but she had to as she had no choice in it. Ma has no feelings for her now but she still loves him and now she has let him go as well. She then leaps to hug him as he stands there emotionless. However, Mai Ran turns out to be around the corner and watches them hug. Knowing that Na and Ma Dong had once dated and watching them hug like this breaks Mai Ran's heart 
and she starts to question if she is actually Ma Dong's love, or did he just settle for her. She comes down from the roof and heads straight out of the office, because she doesn't know what to do. Ma Dong calls her several times but she doesn't pick up. She has already changed his name to Cold Hearted Punk in her contacts. Instead of going home, because Ma Dong would be there, she decides to head to her friend's house instead to get some advice. All of her friends are middle-aged women now, and they know what she should do. She tells them what she saw and asks for some advice, and doesn't really get a satisfactory answer. The women tell her to straight up leave Ma Dong. She is definitely not doing that. Finally, after a few glasses of wine Mai Ran decides to return home, but she feels like she is being followed. Soon the presence becomes more and more clear and she starts to run as a strange masked man follows her. Luckily for her she runs into Ma Dong who is worried sick and searching for her. He asks her why she was being distant, and she refuses to tell him anything. Ma Dong knows that she is angry with him but has no idea why and plans to make her happy again. The next day in the office, Mai Ran's bad mood continues and every time she sees Chief Na she feels really bad. Eventually, she decides to come clear and asks Chief Na while they are in private if the reason that she wasn't married yet was because she was in love with Ma Dong. Chief Na is pretty offended even though it was a really obvious question, and instead asks why Mai Ran was not confident in herself. This statement gets Mai Ran even more troubled, and throughout the day she can do nothing but think of this, until finally she makes up with Ma Dong. Ma Dong comes to her office and she finally tells him what she feels bad about. Ma Dong then calmly explains that it was just them clearing their misunderstanding. And finally Mai Ran calms herself down. She even lets him change his name back in her contacts. Elsewhere, Chief Na calls the detective after seeing a news article that due to the lack of evidence, Lee Hewing was freed of all murder charges. The detective tells her that Larry the man who had been hired by Lee was still on the loose so without his statement there was no link to convict Lee Hewing. Turns out that Larry was still in town. Lee Hewing had pulled a classic Logan Paul. Not only had he hired a criminal but he also hadn't paid the man. He has asked the man to kill Ma Dong and take care of Mai Ran and only then Larry would get the full money that he was owed. For the past few days he had been following Mai Ran and Ma Dong but a good opportunity had not arisen yet. After only a few days out of work, Ma Dong gets back to the same office once more and decides that he wants to rejoin the company. With the chairman involved in the scandal with Lee Siok, and under intense pressure from the board, Ma Dong is accepted back into the company with open arms and is handed the task to shoot the next gen of cryogenic research along with Jai Hoon. Mai Ran on the other hand meets with a new wealthy guy who wants to become part of the research, and go into deep sleep with his lover who is suffering from a terminal illness. She tells him beside the complications it is actually a very easy process, and he must not be fearful of it. The man thanks him as he leaves. Ma Dong and Jai Hoon also finally discover a possible candidate finally after going through an array of weird people who just want to use the cryogenic system to either get away from their problems or earn a lot of money. They find a couple who have a really sick child and need him to be kept to sleep until a cure for his disease is found. Ma Dong approves them as their topic and Jai Hoon is also satisfied with his superior's choice. Despite them loving the same woman, they do share mutual respect for each other. That day as Mai Ran is returning from work, she is almost struck by a motorcycle, and is saved thanks to Chief Na, who thinks this is the same murderer that Lee Hewing had hired. Mai Ran awkwardly thanks her and goes away. The apology however sticks to Na's mind and she cannot live with how she behaved earlier. Later that night she calls Mai Ran to a local store and comes clean that she wanted to put Mai Ran back into the cryogenic bed. She reveals that she had a deal with the fake Lee that in exchange for her information he would put Mai Ran in the cryogenics for her. Na tells Mai Ran that she wanted to do this so that Ma Dong would suffer just like her, and watch as he grew old and his lover was still young. Mai Ran forgives her nonetheless but Chief Na assures her that she would come clean with Ma Dong soon. On the other hand, Professor H Wang finally creates the medicine that will help cure Mai Ran and Ma Dong and he quickly calls Ma Dong to reveal THHE good news. Ma Dong is elated but tells the doctor that he wants to take the medicine first just in case it has some side effects. The doctor agrees and the next day before Mai Ran can arrive he reaches the hospital and starts taking the cure. Midway through, the cure starts reacting with his blood and his pressure starts increasing drastically. His heartbeat also reaches way more than a normal human and he suffers from another heart attack. Mai Ran on the other hand is on her way to the hospital, and her car is suddenly pulled over by a cop. When the driver goes away to see why they were pulled over, Larry comes out of the car and knocks him out. He then slowly heads towards Mai Ran. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos.